Hey all of you book nookers and diorama builders. A quick tutorial today on how I use copper tape for my LED lighting. Now an important thing to think about is for this project we have LEDs and we're going to need a resistor for our LEDs. But before we do that, the very first thing we need to think about is what is our power source? And so if you're using a wall transformer or something like that, it's going to be set, it's going to be regulated. But if you're using batteries, it's important to note that not all batteries are created equal. If you're using rechargeable batteries, those are 1.2 volts for rechargeables and alkaline are 1.5 volts. So that means that this pack is 4.8 volts and this pack is 6 volts. So a little bit of a difference there. I'm going to be calculating for the highest possible voltage for my battery pack, which is 6 volts. This is a copper tape how-to, so we need some copper tape. I use a variety of things, but I use this stuff, which is some leftover stained glass copper tape. You can pick this up at craft stores that have stained glass supplies. It comes in a couple different widths, several different widths. You can also find it online and a lot of times it'll be used for electronics or crafts or, or actually slug barriers. Uh, what you want to make sure is that you're getting solid copper and not just something that's copper colored or copper plated. As far as widths go, I really don't use this half inch too often. Really the sort of the sweet spot, the Goldilocks zone is in the quarter inch or 732nd inch range. I don't really use the eighth inch unless it is in a really tight and confined space. So really I stick to the quarter inch, or in this case, I've got some 730 seconds. It's all about the same. Obviously we'll need some LEDs for the project, but more importantly, we do need to have for each LED a resistor. In this wiring scheme for me, I always use a single resistor for every LED. It's easier to calculate, it just gives me a lot of flexibility and I don't have to make complicated circuits. I have a little bit of Scotch-Brite to clean up the copper before I solder. And then if I'm punching holes in a bit of cardstock or some other thin material, I use one of these little center punches and they come in sets with a variety of sizes, three mil and five mil would be what you'd really need. But it's nice on thinner material. Obviously, if you went to wood, you would just drill it out with a drill. Obviously, a soldering iron's handy for this kind of work. And that's kind of it for all of the big stuff. There's some random little things, but we'll get to those in a minute. This is our pseudo roof, and this is gonna be the rear of our nook or diorama and the face where the rear is, where our power is, and we've got a couple LED positions that we need to wire up for our diorama. Now again, the rear is gonna be where we run the power to, and the face is to the face. Now the first thing we need to figure out is the polarity of the LEDs. Generally, the longer lead is the positive, but if you wanna test that, the easy way to do that is just with a little coin cell, and you just slide that in between the two leads and see if it lights up, and that will help you figure out which the positive is. So in this case, the longer lead is indeed the positive. You can see it doesn't work the other way around. Once we've got our polarity figured out, we can start to figure out the copper tape. So I bend out the leads, keeping track of which is the positive and which is the negative, and I place them into their position. This is where the challenge and the fun comes in because we're trying to figure out how to run the copper tape in the most efficient way. So in this particular instance, the easy way would really to be run a positive or negative down the middle and then connect the other leads by maybe looping it around and coming down to the other side so that I have one positive and one negative line or lead coming out of the back of the nook where I would wire it to the power. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna take my 732nd slash quarter inch copper tape and I'm going to just very loosely position it. I'm not gonna burnish it down in case I need to reposition or remove it. And I'm just gonna use longer lengths. I can always trim this up and tidy this up later. It's better to just kind of work with a little bit of extra slop so that you're not running short. 
And there we have it. That is probably the most elegant solution to this challenge. Now that I've got the tape in place, I'm going to have to remember which was the longer of the two since I bent them out. And I'm going to mark on my board what is positive and negative so I don't accidentally wire them backwards. In this case, I'm gonna bend the positive lead on the LED towards the positive tape and the negative up towards the negative tape. Now you can see that the wires, the leads on the LED are at a right angle. You can bend these really in whatever fashion makes the most sense for the space. And in some cases, you'll see here in a minute, I actually angle them at sort of a 45 degree angle to accommodate all of the, the resistor and make it fit. I've even used the legs or the leads of the LEDs as little stands or offsets so that it can stand above a surface. Now we are gonna need to fit the resistor in. I always put my resistors on the positive side. So that is why the space between the tape and the LED is so wide. I need to leave enough distance that I can get the resistor in there without being too far apart so that the leads actually don't reach. I'm gonna go ahead and trim and clean up. At this point, I feel pretty confident that I'm gonna keep this as the configuration. And so I'm just gonna tidy up all of the little overlapping um, bits and just make sure that everything is nice and clean. And you wanna make sure that you don't have any areas where the copper tape is too close or touching, which might create a short. Now, what I'm gonna also show is what happens or what can you do if you need to actually jump across a connection or jump across some tape. So there are gonna be times when you really do need to cross over and take a positive over a negative, negative over a positive. And obviously that's bad. That's what's called a short and it will create all sorts of challenges and problems in your wiring. And so in this case, if I wanted to connect the negative and I wanted to jump it across for whatever reason over that center positive strip, there is a way to do that. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a little bit of tape. I can use any sort of tape. Um, really, it just needs to be insulating. Uh, I've got some electrical tape here. You could use uh, scotch tape, some little chunk of packing tape. There's a bunch of different stuff out there. You just want something that has reasonably good um, adhesive isn't going to sort of dry out and peel off and fall off and cause problems down the road, but something that is also electrically um, insulating and will help provide a barrier between the two surfaces. So in this case, I would just overlay this bit of electrical tape over it. And then now I can go ahead and I can run my piece that connects both of the negatives and also be able to safely cross the positive. We'll do a little bit of cleanup here just to make it all tidy, but now when we insert the LED, you can see that we, instead of bending it up to the negative, I'm just splaying those out. The positive still connected to the center positive, the negative to the negative, and it jumps over the positive. And this works too. With that all done, I've removed my other little test. I'm going to burnish everything down. I'm using a bone burnisher. You don't need a bone burnisher, but there's just something really satisfying about bone burnishers. I don't know what, um, but you can also use the end of a Sharpie. You don't need to invest in an actual bone burnisher, although I don't think they're all that expensive. Uh, you wanna burnish everything down though and make sure that everything adheres really well. You don't want this peeling up um, and becoming a problem where it might touch other tape or cause a short and cause issues with your lighting not working. The next step is going to be to prep the tape for soldering. And so I'm gonna use my Scotch-Brite and I'm gonna look at all the areas where I think I'm going to solder connections. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a scrub and a clean. In particular, I wanna pay attention to any area where the tapes overlap. You would think that overlapping is enough to form a connection, but a lot of times the adhesive is a bit of an insulator and it's hit or miss. It may or may not work. In some cases, the uh, adhesive might be electrically conductive, but better safe than sorry. So I'm gonna give everything 
a little light scrub-a-dub with the scotch Bright till it gets to that nice shiny copper penny look. And I'm gonna do this even if it already looks shiny. Tapes may have coatings to prevent tarnish, so I just wanna make sure I've got a good, clean copper surface. With everything bright and shiny, we can go on and start some soldering. I'm gonna start with all of the overlaps and just go around and make sure that those are all taken care of. Always remembering to keep your soldering tip clean. With that in place, I know I'm good to go and I'm not gonna run into issues with that not working. Where I know I'm going to solder leads for sure, I will go around and I'm gonna put a little blob of solder just to sort of pre-tin the copper. It'll make it a little quicker, a little easier in the future. Now you can see I keep checking which is the positive and which is the negative. I have a really bad tendency sometimes of soldering LEDs in backwards. Uh, when you start snipping leads, things become very confusing and the more complex the taping is, the harder it is to remember which is the positive and which is the negative. So again, a lot of marks on it for to really make sure that I'm not forgetting which is which. This is looking a little hard and awkward, Keep in mind, this is a chunk of chipboard kicking around on the soldering bench. If this is in your nook, it's a much more rigid and stable um, environment to be soldering on. You're not trying to, you know, fiddle with little bits like this. So this goes a lot easier for sure if it is mounted or part of a more substantial thing. So there we go. That is our first negative solder. I'm going to take our green. Again, I don't quite remember which is which, so I'm bending it back up one more time to remember which is the positive, which is the negative, and I am going to drop that in and get that negative soldered in place. Now you can see in this case, the lead is almost too short. So this is one of those instances where I actually almost put the tape too far away. Um, and if that were the case, I'd probably just put a little patch of tape in there. Uh, LEDs with really long leads, these are actually a little on the short side, are much handier to work with, but that looks solid. It looks like I've got about a sixteenth or so of connection. I put a lot of solder in there, so that should hold up quite well. With the negative in place, it's time to think about connecting the resistors. And so that's what we're going to do next. I'm just going to bend these over and start to think about what angle or how much space I have to get the resistor in place. So in this case, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I don't really have enough room here, so I'm just going to bend it at a you know bit of a 45 degree angle just to free up a little bit more room for the resistor. And so with that in place, I'm kind of eyeball and see how much I need to snip off. I didn't have my wire cutters handy. Sorry for the big arm reach there. So I'm just going to snip and give myself enough wire to create a connection between the two. So, you know, that's about a quarter inch. So I'm gonna leave about a quarter inch on my resistor and that will be my soldering surface. Straighten that lead out, kind of get it positioned in place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna solder it to my center position. Now, I was bad and didn't scotch bright that. And that's one reason why I didn't put a blob of solder there was because I wasn't sure where that would end up. So I'm gonna clean that up with a little bit of scotch bright, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna solder the resistor to the tape first. The thing I'm trying to avoid is a lot of fussy clamping and holding and you know helping hands types of things. And so really by attaching it first to the tape, the tape is mounted, it's rigid. And now I've got a very firmly positioned resistor and I can then fuss and fiddle with it to get it lined up with the wire to the LED and get those positioned so they sit nicely and butt up really close to each other and I can solder those much easier. This is, again, another benefit to using tape in that I'm not trying to use floppy wire and hold things in place and hold wires together and 
you know, try and fiddle with things. I'm using a little bit of pressure here to hold them closer together while the solder cools a bit. I don't use your fingers. That wire gets really hot really quick and heat transfers pretty fast through wire and through copper, but um, sometimes just a little bit of a helping hand with a stick or, you know, my mechanical pencil. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the positive on the green LED. Again, I didn't really plan for the location, so I'm going to make sure that I'm going to scotch bright that and I'm going to solder that in place and do the exact same thing. With the green LED in place, this panel is basically done. The next step is to hook up power. So I've got this nifty little power pack. It's a little four cell uh, battery pack that has my four rechargeable uh, batteries in for 4.8 volts. It's got a little power switch, self-contained, very nice. And we're just going to connect it. So really, this is the moment of truth. We're going to take our positive and our negative and we're going to connect the two and it works. So normally what I would do is again, solder those more permanently in place and then use that power switch to turn them on and off. I am still always happy when LEDs light up when I apply power to them. I don't know what that says about me, but there you have it. This is something that is a little bit more of a real world sample example. In this case, we've got a sort of a pseudo nook here with some lighting at the top some micro LEDs. I really love these little guys for maybe some wall sconces. And then down here, we might have uh, flame LEDs. These are some candle LEDs for maybe a fireplace. So we've got all of these different things going on and we wanna figure out how do we connect them all together. If we look at the top, it looks very much with a little bit extra stuff uh, like what we just did. And so here we have the negatives. You can tell the positives from the resistors. Uh, those are always pointing to the middle. I always connect positives, the resistors to the positives. The negative loops around um, and comes around the side and it also jumps over to the back and it also jumps over to the side. If we look at the positive, it runs down the middle and it jumps over to the back and it jumps over to the side. So we're bridging to the different sides of this little nook. This is all one circuit. So if we look here, the negative comes over and it comes down around and the positive, again, we can tell because of the resistors, but the negative runs along the bottom. This comes over and it comes across and I connect my resistors to the positive. So that's the side with our little micro LEDs. And then on the back side, this is an instance where it made sense because these were so close together to actually run the, the negative um, down and across and connect the negatives kind of splayed out like that and then jump the positives over the negative to the center, this little T in the middle. And so a little bit of tape to insulate it and this all works just fine. So this is an example of where this configuration would work. And there you have it. I hope you found this interesting, helpful, informative. If you did, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, all of those good things. I do always appreciate seeing you coming back to watch more videos. Comments are always welcome. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you again really soon with another random making encounter. Yeah.